What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and up next on our schedule preview series and projected record series, Michigan State, one of the biggest surprises from last season. I don't think hardly anyone saw, saw it coming from this team. They turned it around quickly, were able to use some transfers and uh, give Mel Tucker a lot of credit. Michigan State wound up being one of the top teams in the country last season. We're going to look ahead here to 2022, give you a projected record, not a prediction, but simply a projection based off of this schedule and how tough it is. And before we get to that projection, let's do our schedule preview. Before we break down this 2022 schedule, uh, let's look, before we go game by game, let's look at who they play outside of the division because we know, of course, they're going to play every team in the Big Ten East. This year, they'll play Western Michigan, Akron, and Washington, and they will play Washington on the road. Those are the non-conference games for Michigan State. Uh, Western Michigan, you know, a decent MAC team, so that's not a game you can sleep on, but Michigan State should be much better than them. Akron should be a pretty easy win. Washington will be interesting. It's on the road. It's a tough place to play, but the Huskies were not very good last year, and I don't really see reason to expect them to be much better this year. So that's a game that Michigan State should be able to win, but you never know. Non-conference game on the road, going out west, uh, could be a tricky one. Uh, but I think Michigan State definitely the better team coming into 2022. And then they'll play Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois out of the West. They don't have to play Iowa. They don't have to play Nebraska, who I think might be one of the top three teams in that division this year. Uh, Purdue could be pretty good as well. They don't have to play them. Of course, the one team that beat them last year out of the Big Ten West. Uh, so not a horrible schedule there, especially when you get Minnesota and Wisconsin both at home. Uh, I like that if I'm a Michigan State fan. So the, the schedule outside of the Big Ten East looks pretty good for Michigan State, uh, but the Big Ten East is going to be really good once again. So because of that, the schedule is not going to be easy. They'll play Western Michigan, Akron, and Washington, those three non-conference games to start off the season. They'll close out the month of September with Minnesota at home. Uh, I think there's a pretty good chance this team could be 4-0 at the end of September. They'll go into the month of October where they will play Maryland on the road. Could be a tricky game. I think Maryland's going to be pretty good, especially on offense. Ohio State, we know that'll be a tough one. Wisconsin, and then on the road at Michigan. That is a brutal schedule in the month of October. They do get a bye week between Wisconsin and Michigan, but still a, a tricky game against Maryland on the road. Ohio State and Wisconsin, and then on the road at Michigan. Those four games are going to tell us if Michigan State is is ready to take that next step and be in that playoff conversation. Uh, but they could easily lose two or even three games there in the month of October, and that's going to pretty much take away any hope that they have um, at, at making that next step and getting to the college football playoff this year. But even if they lose a couple of those games, they can still finish strong and maybe get to 10-2, and two, maybe get to another New Year's Six Bowl. But to get to, to really be in that playoff conversation, they're going to need to win three of those four games in the month of October. Then you get to November, and it does get a little easier. They'll play Illinois on the road on November 5th. Then it's Rutgers on no November 12th. Indiana after that on the 19th. Three games that Michigan State should be able to win. And then they'll close things out with a really tough game, I think, on the road at Penn State. This also will be a very tough game. So if you can get through the month of October and, and maybe just lose one game, then it could come down to Penn State, not only for this team potentially being in that playoff conversation, but also to win the Big Ten East. If they lose one game in, in October, and let's say they somehow beat Ohio State and they lose to Michigan, or even if they lose to Ohio State and Ohio State trips up somewhere else, they could still be in this race to win the Big Ten East, and it could come down to this game against Penn State. So a huge game to close out the season. That month of October, though, that's where it's at for Michigan State. How they survive that month will determine the season for the Spartans, and then if they have a chance at the end of the year, it's going to be a tough one there to close things out on the road at Penn State. And uh, we're going to show you the scale now. This is what we use to do the projection. If it's a 50-50 game, a game where I think the spread's three or four points or less, and that game will stay in the white, less than 20%, over 80%. Those are games that I think the spread will be you know, over two touchdowns. Those are not guaranteed wins, but, but close to it. Your 20 to 29 percent games, 71 to 80 percent. Those are games where I think a team is going to be favored by double digits, 10 to 14 points, somewhere in that range. And then 30 to 39, 61 to 70. Those are games where I think the spread will be about a touchdown, six, seven, eight points. Uh, and then we just kind of average all this out to get a projection. So we start with the easy wins for Michigan State. You got a couple of those games: Western Michigan 
and Akron, two games that I think Michigan State should have no trouble in. Western Michigan's not a terrible team out of the MAC. Uh, that one could be one of those games that's kind of close until halftime, but Michigan State absolutely should win that game. Well, let's go now to the blue. We've got three blue games, Illinois, Rutgers, and Indiana, three games late in the year uh, in a row there that Michigan State should be able to win. They're all... They're all games that if you don't bring your A game, it's late in the year, conference games, you never know. Those are potential upsets, but Michigan State should be favored, I think, by double digits in all three of those games. Um, and it would it would be a pretty big surprise if they lost any of those. But remember Illinois last year, they pulled off some upsets, so you never know. Uh, those are games, you know, Illinois is probably closer to 70%. Uh, and that's that one on the road, that one would be maybe an upset alert type game. Then we go to the Purple Games, Washington on the road, Minnesota, Maryland on the road, and Wisconsin at home. Those four games, I think Michigan State will be favored by about a touchdown. Washington on the road, tough place to play. They got a lot of a lot of guys coming back, and it was a rough year for them, but I don't think that's a game that Michigan State's going to be favored by a ton. Minnesota and Wisconsin, two of the better teams out of the Big Ten West, but they're home games, so that's why I don't have those as 50-50 games. I think Michigan State playing at home has just enough to be favored by six or seven points in those. And then Maryland on the road, uh, Michigan State should be the better team, but that is absolutely a losable game. It's not a game that Michigan State's going to be a huge favorite in. Uh, so those four games are all going to be tricky, but I do think Michigan State should uh, be favored in those games. But again, when we're doing these averages and these projections, the projections would say that Michigan State's going to lose at least one of those four games. So keep that in mind. Uh, you also have a game where I think they're going to be a, an underdog, and that's Ohio State. I think they'll be about a touchdown underdog in this game. I know the game wasn't close at all last year, but it's you, know, you never know. You never know. I mean, uh, that was a, a bad matchup, and you could say, well, it's going to be a bad matchup again, and maybe so, but it's college football. It's at Michigan State. I, I don't think that they're going to be a huge underdog in this one. Uh, but it will be obviously be tough for Michigan State to win that game. And then you got Michigan and Penn State, final two games here. Those, in my opinion, are 50-50 games. Those are the games where if Michigan State can find a way to, to take care of business in these other games, let's say they lose to Ohio State, but they can find a way to go on the road and beat Michigan and Penn State, this could be a playoff team. That's, that's a tough task, though. I mean, we're talking about two of the toughest places to play in all of college football, Michigan and Penn State, two teams that are, are going to be talented again this year. Uh, Fairly even to Michigan State. Michigan might be a little better. Penn State might be a little worse. Or you know who who knows how exactly these teams are going to look. So those are going to be really tough games, but they are 50-50 type games in my opinion. But when you average all this out, and yes, I realize you see most of this schedule is is most of its games where Michigan State is favored. But when you average everything out, because they're not going to be huge favorites in a lot of these games, the projection for Michigan State is actually eight and four. So this team projected to go eight and four despite the fact that they're going to be favored in nine of their 12 games and then they have a couple 50 50 games but like i mentioned earlier the odds would say that out of these games with washington and minnesota and maryland and wisconsin they're probably going to slip up and lose one of those games even though they will be favored and so that's why you get that projection at eight and four do you guys agree do you disagree do you think their projection should be higher i think this team should at least go eight and four this year i think eight and four would probably be a disappointment uh, nine and three is is probably your goal at least to get to nine and three, but when you, again you look at this projection, it does come out uh, to eight and four. So give me your thoughts again down in the comments below. Give me your projections for this team. Thank you for watching this video, uh, and stay tuned for more.